The Ukrainian war once again showed that the threat from nuclear weapons has not just disappeared, it was just hiding somewhere in the back. So this video is about the threat from nuclear weapons, but also more importantly, how can we protect ourselves against them? Humanity has developed a lot of destructive weapons, but nuclear weapons, short nukes, are like another completely different category altogether. For instance, it's estimated that if Russia and the United States would have an all-out nuclear war, almost 95 million people would die. I mean, this on its own is a horrible number, but the damage of these weapons would not be just limited to Russia and the United States. They would go to the air, through the atmosphere, radioactive clouds, and actually could make the whole world, the whole Earth, unlivable. It actually could be the end of all humanity. So that makes nuclear weapons a much bigger than da danger than all the other weapons combined. In 1970, the NPT Treaty was signed, which banned the development of nuclear weapons. But not all countries have signed, but also five countries had developed their nuclear weapons before this treaty. And these countries were United States and Russia, United Kingdom and France in Europe, and China. And today we consider only these five countries as the legitimate nuclear powers, perhaps with a bit of an irony. Two countries, India and Pakistan, never signed, but also developed their own weapons. And North Korea had signed the treaty, but then withdrew their signature and developed their own weapon, rather recently. We also know that Israel, which never signed, also developed their own weapons and have multiple of them, but they never admit to it. One country had developed nuclear weapons, but actually willingly dismantled it. This is the only country and it's South Africa. We also know that recently that Iran is quite close to developing nuclear weapons. So these eight countries and perhaps one in the near future. The number of nuclear weapons that the world has, has been declining. In the Cold War we had much more weapons. However, that doesn't mean that we are safer, because those weapons, these nuclear weapons, are becoming, has become much more powerful. So maybe less in quantity, but they are still very, very powerful. The danger has not gone away. Pakistan developed their nuclear weapon using a lot of black market material and also knowledge. However, after this experience, the international community really st stepped up their efforts so that no new country can do it such easily. For instance, if you want to buy uranium or plutonium in the world market, that's not that easy anymore. Or the machines, there are a lot of dual purpose machines that you can just legitimately use for one purpose, but you could also use it to build your bomb. Such equipment is also extremely difficult to acquire. So there are a lot of restrictions. However, if you are really dedicated, you can still find a way. But if that's discovered, the next level is a threat of sanctions, like it happened also in Iran. So you cannot trade, you cannot get equipment. So that's why sometimes you are motivated to give up your program, like Iran claimed to do so. And then UN investigators come and inspect it if you are really complying, that, you know, otherwise the sanctions continue, that kind of international pressure is a second level. Third, if you still don't comply, countries like United States or also Israel do also military action so to sabotage your covert uh, program, nuclear weapons program. So these are the things, restrict the materials and knowledge, sanctions, and if you don't comply with sanction, even military action. So there's really a quite a strong effort going on. However, even this, for instance, was not enough to stop uh, North Korea, and it's not clear if it will really stop Iran at once in the future. Once a country owns this nuclear weapons technology, there are also a lot of ways to deliver it. And when I say deliver, it, I mean attacking other countries with it. I mean, the first nuclear bomb, the Japan on Japan, what the United States threw over Japan, was on a plane. But today you can use missiles with it, 
These missiles can be on vehicles, can just stand, but also can be even put on trains. And the most probably dangerous and difficult to spot one is that they use submarines, submarine under, under, the, under the water, and once a sudden they send a ballistical missiles with a nuclear weapon in it. So unfortunately, there are a lot of ways to attack another country with nuclear weapons. So how do you stop a nuclear missile coming towards your country? Basically, you stop it with another missile. First of all, you have to spot that it is actually coming. You use normally satellites in space. You right away recognize that the missile is coming. Then that satellite informs the ground station and you send another missile so that you can hit it in the air or space would be even better so that it doesn't reach your country. This is how you actually, this is the defense against nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, hitting a, especially a ballistical missile that first goes to the space is rather difficult because you're in space, space is difficult, but once it starts going down, it becomes so fast that, and you have so little time to react that, it's very difficult to hit such a nuclear missile or any missile, basically. Even worse, they use some countermeasures, so you don't even know where to hit. Um, they use some fake mi missiles that, you know, also confuse your defenses. You, so you have to hit that kind of ballistic missile with multiple missiles, which makes it even more difficult. So how is the experience here? The United States have been working on this for like many, many decades. And recently, they have to admit that they cannot really stop all. In the best of cases, maybe if one or maximum two such missiles is actually sent to the United States, they think perhaps then they might be able to stop them. If it's more, even the United States accepts that probably it would overwhelm their defenses. More recently, the Israeli also used a similar technology, interceptor technology also even in the space, and they had success with it. But again, all these tests are with only one missile. Even 2 3 it's not clear if any kind of missile defense can stop it today. And especially countries like Russia, which could send tens, when not hundreds of missiles, it is clear that the answer to our main research question today, the missile defenses that some countries have, like United States and also Israel and also Russia, they could stop maybe just a handful, maximum a few missiles, but not more. Even that, is far from being guaranteed. So unfortunately, we have to accept that currently the defense against nuclear missiles is extremely weak. Unfortunately, at least in the short run, things might be even getting worse. You see, today, ballistic missiles are the preferred delivery method for nuclear warheads. They are very, very difficult to stop but they're very predictable, because they first go to space and then really predictably go down. We might be able to stop them, especially with the artificial intelligence and better technology. But now, next in line are, co are the so-called hypersonic missiles. These are smaller cruise missiles, but extremely fast. And unlike the ballistic missile, they don't need to go to space. They can come from anywhere. They can also fly very low, and we don't have anything fast enough to intercept them. Plus, they're also very, as I said, imp unpredictable because they look like normal cruise missiles and every country has it. So, as of now, we don't have anything that could stop this kind of hypersonic nuclear warheads. So, this is really bad news for the next decades or so. Trying to hit missiles with missiles is difficult. But in the long run, we might use the directed energy weapons, or what we also call lasers, to stop these nuclear weapons. They are much faster and can be used until multiple missile, against multiple missiles. So these laser weapons might be a solution, a much better defense system against nuclear weapons. However, although some countries already use them, like United States, Turkey and China have some laser weapons, they are far from being at the point that they could stop all these missiles. And we also don't know how many decades we will need until we get there. And we also have to look back in the past 
Already in the 80s, this idea is not new with these laser weapons. There was the so-called Star Wars uh, missile defense program by uh, President Reagan in the United States, and they wanted to put satellites in the space with laser weapons and then shoot down ballistical missiles. So that was the idea. But it was a very costly flop, and today it's quite ridiculed by many people. So that's why laser weapons might be the future, but we don't know when that future will ever come to being. There are really no good news on this topic, nuclear weapons. But maybe a minor point we should also emphasize here. Nuclear weapons are a bit different than normal bombs. For instance, if you explode it in the air with another defense system, for instance, you would be afraid probably that there's a huge nuclear fallout and your country would be contaminated anyway. But that's not the case. Nuclear weapons you have to detonate willingly with some really some procedure, some um, sequence. Otherwise, they don't become a nuclear explosion. They might explode, but not in a nuclear way. That's also the reason that, despite many accidents, we never had a nuclear fallout from these weapons, because there are thousands of nuclear weapons. They have been transported all around the world, and there have been many, many accidents on the Soviet side, also on the United States side. They have been crashed in planes, ended up on the sea, even burned. But we never had a nuclear explosion. The reason is that if such things explode, it doesn't just become nuclear. You really need to do the right order of things. That's, I found, the only good news in this whole nuclear weapon discussion, that accident doesn't result in catastrophe right away. This was basically the only piece of good news when it comes to nuclear weapons. The fact is that we have way too many of these weapons. We can hardly really protect ourselves against them. And an increasing number of countries are developing them. Yes, on this last point, the international community does a lot to stop new countries developing nuclear weapons. I think we need to do that as humanity so that they limit the risk of nuclear war. However, I see much less effort in pressuring countries which already has nuclear weapons to at least decrease their nuclear stockpile. We might not be able to really force them to give up completely their nuclear arsenal, but I think it would be definitely possible that they decrease their number. I mean, as an international community, public opinion, in democracies especially, right, they really play a huge role. And if there are no democracies, some economic sanction might help. So, I mean, as an international community, we have quite a lot of tools at our disposal, but only if, as a public, we agree and also pressure our politicians. So basically, it's on our side. We really have to do something as a public. I mean, for the environment, there's a huge support group, and we are really achieving something. But this one might, is actually a short-term threat. Within hours, whole humanity might end. The nuclear weapons are capable of this. We cannot just neglect this topic. I think that really it's a high time. I mean, it's a good, the Ukraine war is a wake-up call. Let's really do something about these nuclear weapons. We cannot completely get rid of their danger, but at least try to minimize it.